From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. And welcome to Morton's Seafood Restaurant on the banks of the Chifuncta River in Madisonville to Bayou Wild TV. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Martha Spencer. We've got a great episode coming up. We've got a trip down to Grand Isle. That's right. We're going to take a look at the pelican, the Louisiana state bird, from a very special perspective. In the 1950s and 60s, DDT was a very popular pesticide used throughout the United States. That pesticide made its way into waterways and to the fisheries in South Louisiana and bioaccumulated. Uh, into brown pelicans and led to a failure of, of nesting in coastal Louisiana. And so by the 1963, the birds were extirpated from the state. So in 1968, a, a group of biologists uh, from the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries teamed up with biologists in Florida and began to bring birds from Florida over to Louisiana to reintroduce the brown pelican. And then we head down to Venice for the Wish to Fish. We're going to take out some kids from the Miracle League of the Greater New Orleans area. They're going to get a fishing trip of a lifetime. Wish to Fish has been around since 2006, and our basic mission is getting kids back outside. We try to get organizations or groups that, uh, or for kids that would not normally have the opportunity to, to go out on a boat and go fishing. So most of the kids that participate in these events have never been on the water before. So it's the middle of summer and snapper fishing is very popular this time of year. So we're going to do a quick ceviche, which is basically a dip. Ceviche is actually not something that you cook. You actually cook it with the acids from fruit. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana fish fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana fish fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. Imagine Louisiana without the brown pelican. It's hard to believe that Louisiana's state bird, a symbol that has represented Louisiana even long before statehood, was once on the brink of extinction. 
In the 1950s and 60s, DDT was a very popular pesticide used throughout the United States. That pesticide made its way into waterways and to the fisheries in South Louisiana and bioaccumulated uh, into brown pelicans and led to a failure of, of nesting in coastal Louisiana. And so by the 1963, the birds were extirpated from the state. So in 1968, a, a group of biologists uh, from the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries teamed up with biologists in Florida and began to bring birds from Florida over to Louisiana to reintroduce the brown pelican. Over the next eight years, more than 750 brown pelican chicks were relocated from Florida to Queen Bess Island near Grand Isle. The year 1971 was monumental for the brown pelican as biologists documented 11 nests which marked the first successful recolonization of the species in over a decade. We would feed them, care for them until they were able to fledge. And once the bird learns to fledge, it's going to come back to nest wherever it was successful fledging. It's a tribute to the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries for taking a chance when there wasn't a lot of data. And there's a lot of people that were involved in this reintroduction and restoration program. The furthest western population during that reintroduction effort was in Panama City. So it was going to take a lot of time in order to get that, that species to naturally colonize this area. But we knew that the habitat was here. So that's why when we brought them here, we only had to do that a couple times in order to get this population going. And really it's about the habitat and maintaining these habitats out here. The majestic brown pelican growth continued to soar as the population spread across the coast. And those numbers have continued to climb ever since. And today we have just as many, if not more birds than we did prior to uh, the effects of DDT in coastal Louisiana. In 2009, the brown pelican was removed from the Louisiana endangered species list. And just as the future seemed so bright, the 2010 BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill took a devastating toll on the flourishing brown pelican. And the largest man-made disaster in the United States. And all that oil moved us into coastal Louisiana and just like you would expect, very similar to DDT, those effects started showing up on brown pelicans. We were seeing brown pelicans come into the colonies oiled, and then sure enough, the oil came in and affected the colonies and the birds were further impacted. So there's a large effort to go out and capture these birds, rehabilitate them. Um, and now we are in that post oil spill world and we're starting to get some of the funding uh, from BP for those impacts. And today we're also talked about how the state is under engineering design to do a large-scale restoration effort on Queen Bess Island. Much like the towns and the people of Louisiana who have bounced back after disasters, so has the brown pelican. What we have learned is that brown pelicans are a good indicator of the health of our marshes. Um, brown pelicans are a very resilient bird and given the right habitat and the right opportunity, they can and they will rebound. In 2010 in Barataria Bay, there were about five brown pelican nesting colonies. And as we stand here today, there is only one left and that is Queen Bess. And that's why it's so important for the state to get out there and restore that habitat so we can provide habitat for this bird well into the future. The population across the state is 80 to 100,000 brown pelicans. So, this is important to sustaining their habitat and again it's one of three rookeries that are that are that are essential to maintaining that habitat these birds are resilient just like louisiana people and you know what they recognize the importance of the bird so that your children and your grandchildren will be able to enjoy the brown pelicans that you see here today 
Today, it's rare to visit any coastal community and not see numbers of pelicans gathered around piers and soaring along the surf. I mean, that's part of, you know, the one of the beautiful things. It's on the state flag, it's on our state seal. Uh, you go to the beach, you can't, like, who'd never seen pelicans kind of skirting down the beach or when you go out fishing or enjoying some time on the water, you know, they're just perched on every piling there is. I mean, to have that species not part of this uh, ecosystem would just be an incredible thing. I can't even imagine what that would look like. Louisiana's state bird is more than just a feathered fish-eating coast dweller. It is a symbol of a healthy coastal habitat. It is a symbol of resilience and success. It is a symbol of culture. Union, justice, confidence. It is a symbol that defines Louisiana. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Each year we bring approximately 20 participants from the Miracle League Network from Greater New Orleans and they get them down to Venice Marina, take them on the water and catch whatever bites. Yeah, they're excited. They already got their fish stories loaded up on the bus. They tell me how big their fish is going to be. They got their ice chest ready to go for all their big catch. So they're excited. They know they're going on a boat. They might be a little hesitant to get out on the water, but once they get out there, they're hoping to come back with a big catch. Michael with his very first red fish. Boy! Boy! <laughs> and no dad! Wish the Fish has been around since 2006, and our basic mission is getting kids back outside. We try to get organizations or groups for kids that would not normally have the opportunity to, to go out on a boat and go fishing. So most of the kids that participate in these events have never been on the water before.
that. There you go, baby. I got All right, you ready? We're going to bring yeah. him over to five. Woo there you go. You got him, go boy. Go ahead, cut down. You got I him. Got you got him, cut down. <laughs> Bam. My ball, mama mia. <laughs> Every year it's different because you never know if you're going to catch or not. So, you know, I have a waiting list of kids who are like, if you don't have anybody to go, I can go. And the word has traveled throughout the league about how special this trip is. Just the expectation of catching a big one. Woo, that's a key for that, bro. We need a net. Oh, there he goes. Look the spot. Look at the spots on that guy. No, John Cabo. No, Taco Bell. Absolutely. You know, we all take this for granted. When we go out fishing, we're trying to catch 25 trout in Louisiana. And these kids go out, and we get thank you letters from the organizations and from the kids specifically. And it's rarely ever about catching a fish. It's always, thank you, Captain Bula, for letting me drive your boat. Thank you, Miss Danica, for letting us go out on the boat and ride in the, in the air and, and just have a good time on the water. It's rarely ever about, thank you for catching, thank you for letting me catch a fish. Bring it, bring it, oh, bring him up, bring him up. at least 13, um, about five redfish and the rest were about sheep heads. As far as the guide's concerned, we had a struggle. I had a struggle, not because of these boys, but because the fish didn't cooperate. But when they would catch a croaker and watch the smile on their face and, you know, I caught a fish, I caught a fish, that meant so much to me. When we take these kids out on the war, especially today out of Venice, and we take the, the children from um, the, the Miracle League, they get to go out, and it's not just about the kids, it's about the family members as well, the moms, the dads. And had a little boy that caught a shark so he walked around and he showed everybody pictures of the giant shark that he caught. It was awesome because I caught my first fish, I caught my first keeper fish and it was a two-in-one fish and then also I caught another one which was huge. Who put you on the fish? Captain Billy. Tell him how big was that redfish. Show him this song. There you show go. That's here. right. That how, big big. A, how big a fish you catch? And then, and then show how big fish your sister catches. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> we had a great day with Cap, Captain Jared. We had uh, how many redfish we caught? Uh, six. Six and a couple of catfish. We had a good time though. Saw some alligators, right? Yeah. Very good. Oh yeah, on the ride home, um, you got fish stories coming out of books, and I mean, you never heard so many fish stories coming out of um, these little kids. Until you actually come to an event, and you're here, and you can experience and see the, the smiles on, these, uh, on the children's faces, and how they run up to the captains after and give the captains a big hug, how they run up to us and give us big hugs, and, and just squeeze us and say thank you. So, I mean, if you experience that, I mean, you're gonna wanna just be a part of it. It's definitely self-satisfaction, and people ask us all the time, why do you do this? Why do you do this? Really hard feeling, and, and we just really hope that we don't take it for granted. Whatever you. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. 
So it's the middle of summer and snapper fishing is very popular this time of year. So we're going to do a quick ceviche, which is basically a dip. Ceviche is actually not something that you cook. You actually cook it with the acids from fruit. Now what we've got here is two small fillets from a red snapper. You can use any kind of snapper, bee liner, mangrove snapper, whatever you have. You want to fillet it off the skin. And what we're going to do first is the cooking process. And that's what's done with the fruit. Basically the citrus, the limes, the lemon actually cooks the meat. We like to cook it and slice it very thin. Everything in this I think tastes better when it's sliced thin. It kind of gels all the flavors together. So you really just want to put your fingernail against it, slice against the grain, kind of like you would a skirt steak, so you get these little tiny strips. And try not to get any bloodline in there either. This is also going to help the meat cook a little bit faster. This is actually something you can even do on the boat. You can prepare your vegetables and fruits for the dip and then just add the cooked fish if you want. I learned this recipe from my boyfriend. He uh, makes the best ceviche I've ever had. And uh, I've tried it a lot of different ways. You can actually make it with shrimp too. You might see that in restaurants a lot. The next step shows how much I cut my fingers when I'm fishing because Every time I cut lemons and limes, I tend to find the juice on my hand stinging something. Now, generally it depends on how much fish you want. I usually get about eight limes. Uh, I've got a mix of lemons and limes here. But the goal is you want to get enough fruit so that you can actually uh, coat the meat completely, have it pretty much buried. You'll know it's done if the meat, you can't see through it. You want it to be kind of white. And it generally takes, depending on how much you have, about two to three hours, but that's good. So basically you want to have enough juice, maybe one more, kind of knead it down on my fingers to where it's completely wet and all the meat is covered in submersed in some juice. So now the fish is ready to cook and this is where the chemical reactions take place. I usually just put it back in the fridge just like this for about two hours. And when we come back, we'll drain a little bit of the juice out and add the rest of the ingredients. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. If you hunt or fish, you really need to check out 20echo.com. It's an app that you can take on the water or on the hunt. It logs all the information. It's got the date, the GPS location, tons of information to log your catch or kill. It's a great thing to have. Check it out at 20echo.com and you'll see it more on Bayou Wild TV. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Welcome back. While well, our ceviche is almost ready, we've got our snapper fish already cooked in the lime juice. You can see how it's changed color. It's kind of white now, opaque a little bit. You can't see through it anymore, so that's how you know it's done. Now we're going to drain a little bit of the lime juice out, not all of it, but enough so that it's not soupy. This is the easy part. We're going to add one yellow pepper. You can use any color you want. I tend to think that the colored flavors taste a little bit better. They're sweeter. They didn't have any reds at the store, so I got orange and yellow. One red onion. I prefer red onions. Got a little more flavor. I'm not going to use all of this because it is a big onion and there's not a huge amount of fish here, so maybe about half of an onion. The key ingredient, probably one of the most important ones, cilantro. Not everybody likes it, but I think it's the key to a good ceviche. Finally chopped up a little heat. We've got jalapeno, one jalapeno and one habanero finely chopped. There's one ingredient I don't have here that I sometimes do include and that's fruit. You can use peaches, you can use nectarines or pineapple, uh, anything really sweet. Sometimes people even include watermelon. Over here is our avocado, but since this is a very ripe avocado, I'm gonna wait till this is mixed in before I add that. Also, you wanna add some cracked bell, uh, black pepper. I'm always pretty generous with this. 
Now the best part about this ceviche, it actually tastes better the next day after it sits in the refrigerator for a few hours and kind of blends the flavors of the vegetables. So it actually will really taste better tomorrow. A Little bit of sea salt. One more touch before I'm gonna add the avocado. Just a cap full of club soda. What this is gonna do is take some of the tartness of the lime juice and lemon juice out. It's all you really need there. Kind of neutralizes the acids a little bit, makes it a little bit less bitter. It's all you need is one capful, maybe two. Just a little dash. Nice ripe avocado. You don't want one of those hard ones. They don't really taste so good. And this will last a couple days, but you really want to use it fresh. And one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning was fresh snapper only. You really don't want to use any fish that's been frozen. It just doesn't have the same texture and the same freshness. So this is all about what's out of the garden and what's fresh. And there you have it. Like I said, you can add or subtract things you don't like and add things you do, but generally that's what it looks like. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. All right, next week we will be in Alaska. I can't wait. Freezing, hopefully, but we're gonna be here for you. Jim Henderson, the voice of the New Orleans Saints, retired recently, but one thing he did not retire from is fishing. We take you fishing with Jim Henderson. This is the thing I would rather do more so than anything, and that's to make trips like this. I've fished in a lot of different places for a lot of different species, in a lot of places in the world, and it's something I can never get enough of. I truly treasure it. And check us out on social media also. You can see all our full-length episodes on YouTube. You can subscribe and get an email when new videos are posted. We also have a Facebook page and a Bayou Wild Instagram page as well.